All right, and we're live, and then we go here, and then uh, obviously you're coming into the studio, uh, and Olaf is wearing his usual, you know, his sports coat and tie and whatnot, and he's got, uh, you know, normally he's got like the teal green something, you know, one week it was the piping of his suit, another week it was his tie. This week it's actually a pencil, of all things, it's a pencil. Uh, he's got it stuck behind his ear at the moment, he's got a stack of note cards on his desk, a lot of them look like they've been kind of... Like they've been written on, and then some stuff's been scratched out, and more stuff written on in its place. Uh, but then, of course, you know, he'll, uh, in fact, you might actually see him do that, because it's like his brain, similar to mine, uh, constantly running, new ideas, running around all the time. Uh, and then he'll motion for you to take a seat, pause for a moment, he'll scribble some more on one of his note cards, and then, uh, and then the production team will do their thing, and they'll, you know, they'll bring the lights down, and the old five, four, three, silent count, whatever, and He'll start his little thing. And he says, Welcome back, mech fans and Solaris aficionados. We've had two explosive matches already, but we still got three more for you to enjoy tonight. Though I must say, after that last one, I am quite tickled to be pink. And I don't know what that word or phrase means, but I am it. That was a great, great match. If you don't get if you didn't see it live, you need to go on to I don't know what the Battletech YouTube would be. <laughs> Uh, before we go any further, the usual plug for the media darlings out there. I am Olaf Krieg, and this is the Triple Press. Special thanks, as always, for the Donegal Media Group, the Krieg Dominion Media, and our very own Solaris Broadcasting Company, without whose support, we wouldn't have been able to bring you such fine entertainment ever since 3022. Our next matchup features two teams struggling to stay out of the middle of the pack, or perhaps more accurately, one team trying to stay out of the mid-pack, and another wishing they could get back in in order to climb up further. This match's home team is one-time rival for the Trinity Cup Championship, hailing from the, the Capellan Confederation. One win and three losses. We're talking about, of course, the Cyan Spirits. Pushing for a second win of the season in order to get back on track, I'm sure we'll see some interesting moves from the Spirits here tonight. Facing off against those Spirits are the Liren Debutants, a team under new management and one that has shown tremendous potential because of it, and they are currently sitting in fourth place with two wins and two losses so far this year. And here to answer a few oddball questions and perhaps shed some light on any new developments across the league is the Debutats team manager, Baron Isaac Weissman. Isaac, excuse me, Isaac. Wow, that, that came out wrong. <laughs> How are you doing tonight? Uh, well, I'm not tickled pink, but uh, I am certainly happy to be here, Olaf. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I, I, I've also been catching up on some of the matches and uh, I certainly was entertained by what I've seen uh, recently on uh, on this channel. So... Uh, thank you once again for having me back. Well, we're thank, you're welcome, and uh, of course we're we're happy that you're entertained. That's what we're here for uh, that that fine quality entertainment that you can only get everywhere else but here. <laughs> uh, now, as I've mentioned a couple of times already, uh, this last week completed our regular ratings review of the pilots and the techs across the league. Some teams have made substantial changes in their lineup, and in some cases, because of the losses suffered from other stables and cooperatives drafting our players away. In your case. There has been movement in the ratings, but at a quick glance, it doesn't seem to be any major groundbreaking movements. Can you shed some light on this and how it has affected your team overall? Perhaps maybe correct us if we were wrong in our initial assessment. So, uh, look, I think, Olaf, this week we've had a big focus. We've we focused on the technology rather than the people. I, I think we've got the people we want, and there's always going to be that situation where the big leagues come along, the draft comes in. You know, We know we're going to lose people eventually, but we're going we're gonna to utilize them while we've got them. But uh, conversely, the technology we've been quite stagnant on, uh, and I believe in in you know watching my opponent. You know, uh, Noske and Imikin is a you know no no that no thy enemy is a a catchphrase of mine, and um, uh, so it's always interesting to see that the matches. And I think that I run the risk of becoming a bit too samey as well with 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 the team that that we put on the field, uh, and for that reason, we reached out to various contacts. We actually had a very interesting uh, matter come in. So you'd obviously be aware, uh, Olaf, of, of the very famous Wolf's Dragoons uh, mercenary company. I never heard of them. <laughs> really? <laughs> uh, and, and now for several years, they have been running a, a variation of the uh, the Mad 4A, the Mad 5A, uh, or as uh, their their founder, Jamie Wolf, has called them, the, or called it the Mad Cat, doesn't matter, the Marauder 2. Uh, now, this, this mech right now is exclu the exclusive property of the Wolf's Dragoons, but um, 
Jamie Wolfe has been uh, in contact with Blackwell Industries on New Balance and has actually been talking about potentially opening a limited run of the Marauder 2 to potential house buyers in the coming years. Uh, very, very, very uh, restricted access to the product. Uh, but the Wolf's Dragoons have actually been kind enough to provide us with a, a, a sample unit uh, oh, that we can oh, bring to the uh, bring to the Greylands Trios League, which uh, is a great chance for you to see what this mech can do. Um, obviously, we don't have the piloting skill that the, the Wolf's Dragoons have, but I think the metal will speak for itself, Ola. Well, you know, there's uh, so definitely something to be said for such a famous unit as the Wolf's Dragoons, who have been around for you know 20 plus years well uh yeah, about 20 years or so now <clears throat> and if they're bringing something to the field you can rest safely on the fact that it's been based on battlefield proven tactics and doctrines and what have you uh i'm very curious to see what this marauder can do uh we won't get into whether or not we'll see the actual marauder tonight because you know we don't want to give our opponents too much information ahead of time uh that would be well, you know, somewhat catastrophic, perhaps. We'll see. But good to hear that uh, we have been blessed by such an austere, uh, I hope I'm using that word right, uh, such an august uh, organization, uh, even if it is just a single mech in the, you know, assault ton, or excuse me, assault class range. Uh, next week, oh, I skipped a question. Uh, there we go. Historically, the spirits have had their ups and their downs, a bit more wide-ranging between these two points than most teams. Last week, against the Wolverines, and even in the week prior against the Crows, your team demonstrated some gentlemanly behavior, and in fact, even helped out with repair costs. Uh, I'm not sure why I had the spirits mentioned in there. Maybe as a comparing and contra contrasting. He's got Now he's pulling his note card out. He's starting to put more marks well, on it. <laughs> let, let, let me stop you there, Olaf, and I think I can I think I can read where you're going. So um look I'll be quite honest. I this tonight's match is one that's actually got me um relatively concerned. Um now the Spirits are a great team. As you said, they were a uh, a finals contender only only a few years ago. Um they have done very well here. I, I I'll make my record so far has been loss win loss win, which means I'm due for a loss. Uh, if, if that's the way it goes, <laughs> but more so, as I said before, understanding the way your opponent works. So far this year, um, we've seen the uh, uh, the spirits running their their typical um, uh, archer, uh, uh, marauder, and fire starter, um, which is uh, look, I think a good combination. It's the sort of combination that I would probably field if I were in command of a team like the the spirits as well. Uh, but last week. Ammunition explosions took out both the Archer and the Marauder, um, left quite a mess on the field, which means that um, I don't really know what they're bringing along tonight. Uh, now, if they didn't replace any mechs, then I know they're going to be fielding an, an awesome a Hunchback and a Firestarter. And that uh, that awesome <laughs> is uh, is certainly a big threat. But, you know, they may have gone out there with their funds. They may have opened up their uh, their stable somewhat. So... Every every week I've felt pretty confident going in, knowing what I'll be facing. Today, not so much. So, uh, and I think that 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 loss of knowledge is a loss of power. Indeed, and it's funny how uh, I believe a week ago you had made a similar prediction about uh, one of the teams you were facing. Maybe it was a different matchup. I don't recall specifically now. Uh, the question I was getting at, however, uh, and we obviously thank you for your insight there. That is definitely appreciated. Um, what I was getting at, however, was, you know, last week and the week prior, you had demonstrated some gentlemanly behavior, as I called it. Uh, you even assisted with the repair costs for, I believe it was the Crows. It may have been another team. I don't remember now. Uh, uh, it was the Wolverines. The Wolverines, Wolverines. that's it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, is this something that you're doing in order to reward, let's say, rewarding fair play on the field? Or is this just at some other angle or objective you're attempting to achieve? I've said it before, Olaf. I think that politics has no place in sport, uh, and you know there are all these expectations that you know I'm going to be diametrically opposed to the Dragonborn or the Golden Suns for various political reasons and such, or to any of the outworlds type uh, or the the periphery states. Not the case. You know we are all professionals here, here to create sports entertainment, and you know I don't want to see teams uh, go out of business because of a bad run uh, on the field. You know, I, I'd rather see these teams um, find their feet again and get to the top. Now, I can't always do that. You know, I'm, never gonna, I'm not always going to have the money to do that, but when 
the hand of friendship can be extended, I'd like to be the one extending it, you know? And even even if I was to lose, but my opponent was to lose significant yeah. hardware and put, put them in a potentially bad situation, if I could, I'd like to help out. Now, I think that the science spirits tonight, and this is what I was getting before, is to say that I think that they are in a well enough established position that they don't need my help. Um, but I certainly do think that uh, uh, we'll have a good game, though. A good Indeed. match. Indeed, and thank you for that. And, yeah, and no, you're right. I think the spirits are in a fairly safe spot financially overall as far as a snapshot on their continued performance here this season. The team that I personally am very much concerned about is the Ramoran opposition. Uh, they are, of course, in uh, on a downward spiral, as it were, as it is, as it were. And uh, it, it, as we all know, that downward spiral can quickly become a death spiral. So we'll see how that turns out with their performance this week. Well, you remember the opposition had him in my first loss, though. So it, it, it's hard for me <laughs> it to is feel particularly ruffled. <laughs> but, but I will note, though, it was interesting. I was listening to the commentary uh, around the, um, the Dragonborn and um, uh, Industrialist match. And I, I heard some of the commentators referring to the fact that a, a mech with no legs and no gyro and went missing an arm was effectively destroyed. And, and uh, that, that harkens back to the, the very first match. Now, thankfully, <laughs> it didn't come to a head there because that mech was destroyed subsequently by firepower. But uh, I, I, I found it interesting that, that we kicked off the conversation about when is a mech, when is a mech that's not destroyed actually destroyed? Yeah, the, what, what is it? it uh, I, I'm trying to remember the, um, you know, I never served in the military. Uh, maybe somebody who is higher up in the creation process of this entire league and whatnot may have, and I can't remember the exact term, but combat ineffective is certainly one of a couple phrases that may be used there. That's uh, true. That's very true. Yes. Uh, it is, and that is interesting how we had such a similar moment, uh, you know, early in, the, early in the season and then now last, uh, or excuse me, earlier this evening, uh, a very similar situation did come into play. But as you said, it was destroyed effectively. Uh, and, of course, there does not appear to be uh, any sort of, uh, we'll say, backlash or questioning, God forbid, even investigations as we had previously. Uh, next week is command, excuse me, Commander's Round week, and you'll be facing the Torian Nationals. Some might say their recent successes are a fluke, but it can be argued that not everything appearing as a fluke really is one. What kind of thoughts do you have for your match next week, especially considering each team will have to have, excuse me, each team will have to have a designated commander? So first off, um, I'm not that familiar with what the commander's rule actually means. Uh, if I look specifically at the Nationals team, um, I, I'm feeling at this point quite good going into next week, mainly because, and I, I, I admit this is a bit of schadenfreude on my part, but I did see the Nationals lost their key highly skilled pilots yes uh in the last in the last match which means that going into next week um no matter what medal they put on the field they're putting it out there with with green pilots basically mm -hmm. uh and, and that has a, that has a big effect not only because it's going to mean they miss more of their shots but it's going to mean when my pilots hit their shots there's a greater chance they're going to fall over yeah. and no one no one wins wins a battle from the ground except maybe a legless phoenix hawk <laughs> uh, or warhammer <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, without, without knowing a little bit more about what the, what the commander's round is actually going to entail for us, I, I would say that I'm feeling quite confident next week. Uh, I think the nationals don't really need to leg up, but I think that they need some time to, to get that experience back into their roster because that, that, that last round of the draft hit them hard. It did. And it didn't help that the week prior, as my memory serves, the week prior, they also lost another one of their better players. So two back-to-back -back losses like that can really hurt a team. Uh, and I've noticed that some of the teams have tried to not always put their A team out in front, uh, although it's not hard – excuse me, it's not easy to do when you know the competition that you're about to face could very well have their A team out on the field. So, Look, at the end of the day, the draft is a part of life. And, and so I'm always going to be putting out the people that, that need to win the matches. And if they, if they leave, then good on them because they've managed to find their way into the big leagues of Solaris. Indeed. Um, and, and that's why we have a robust regimen of bringing up um, uh, newer pilots. You know? Yes. And so as it turns out, every team has a feeder team. I'm just going to leave my comment as it is. Well, we don't know much yet about the Commander's Round and the special conditions and what they may be. But surely it's going to be interest to, interesting to experience it. At any rate, 
It looks like the Spirits are taking the field now, which means the uh, debutantes aren't far behind. So let's head on down to the overhead shot, thanks to our own special blimp. Now that, we will switch from this view to that view, but I need to put this one up. There we go. All right. And then I need my rules up so I can follow along. James, that was a really good interview, by the way. No worries. I, I feel like there was a certain, you know, when you get the, the and, I, and I've been struggling to find it, uh, at least for, you know, my part of the interviews, finding that uh, that natural flow of conversation. And it's not always, it's not always there. But I feel like this one, we definitely got much closer than we have previously. So thank you. No problem. All right. First up, I've already done, or excuse me, I've already added the one free experience point that every pilot in tech gets for both teams. So our next step is sponsorship. You have, I believe you've got a sponsorship ending. Let me double check that. You do have a sponsorship ending. Medical costs reduced by one level will be disappearing uh, effectively more or less now. So you have the option of attempting to retain that. Uh, and if you attempt but fail, you then, of course, get a normal role for a new or different um, sponsorship. I think so, we'll let that one go, and we'll go for something new. You all right? We're going to start over from scratch. All right. So your first role will be a 2d6. You have a plus two from a previous marketing uh, stratagem, I guess. Yep. <laughs> marketing blitz. That went very uh, well. Oh, so it's only be a seven total. With that is two. a seven. So what yeah. that will do, it's over here, on a seven, negotiations are taking longer than expected. Minus one to the sponsorship type roll. So what that will do is now it's a 3d6 plus one, because that plus two would have carried over, but it's been affected by that minus one. Okay, so we are now at a total of 10. 10, and that will give you, not bad, plus one gather intelligence rolls. Okay. So that, uh, you know, doesn't necessarily have the biggest effect, uh, but can still be helpful when when the time comes. Let's see. Uh, oh, no. Stop that. Uh, I'd like to personally thank our new sponsor, Satin, Satin Listening Devices. For, uh, <laughs> coming into uh, to, uh, uh, we say it's satin. We're all ears. Yes, there you go. Week five. Oh, that's not Jesus Christ. Let me see if I can get my own season information correct. Thirty twenty-five. Week five ending. Uh, thirty twenty-nine. Week. Here we go. All right. And now for the science spirits. They have, I don't believe they have one ending. Let me double check because my memory is not trustworthy. They do not have one ending. So they'll be starting with just a plus zero on this roll. 2d6. Wow, rolled an 11. Sponsors are eager to do business with the spirits, which is really weird considering their current situation. Uh, plus one to the sponsorship type roll. So this will be 3d6 plus one. For a total of 12, giving them a plus 2 whenever they decide to recruit as their MWE. Which is weird, because they already have a plus 2 recruiting MWE. So I guess they're going to have a plus 4 total for a while. No, let me do it separately, because otherwise I'll get confused. Plus... Yeah, one, one, will, one will expire sooner. Exactly. This is starting... 3025 week five, ending 3029 week five. All right, now that we've done that, our next thing to do is uh, midweek events. And you have chosen marketing and scrounging. So you go ahead and give me a 2d6 for your marketing. Ooh, that is a four. No. That is going to be a no result. I don't even have to look at the board. <laughs> Yeah, and for the scrounging, we're at a seven, which I think is also nothing. Uh, I'm going to verify. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, three through seven is nothing. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. For the spirits, they are doing some training. So I'm going to roll 2d6 for them right quick. And they don't have any special bonuses on top of that. For a total of six, no additional training has stuck. And now we're at gathering intel. 
Okay. You're, if you're so ready, does, does a 2d6. My, does my new... Does my new I, you know, preparing? I will allow it because I can be a generous... Oh, oh my god, go. 12. That's well, you'll know everything. So I'll go ahead and just do this now, and then we can adjust as needed. This is what you are facing. You are facing the awesome, the hunchback, and the fire starter, as you predicted. Yep, what a shock. Yep, uh, and you can see their gunnery and piloting scores. Let's see. Matashov has two edge and one tactics. Weapon specialist PPC. Yi has two edge, one tactics, and sniper. And then Ivory has nothing special, uh, just two edge, and is considered an elite pilot. Okay. Are there any changes you would like to make before no, no, we? No, I'm happy to happy to stick with. I, I I built my team expecting that, but I had some backup teams just in case. Just in case, gotcha. Yeah, yeah it was funny. I I didn't want to say this because it was totally going to be out of character. When you uh oh my god, look at that battle value difference, twenty five hundred to your favor. Uh, when you uh when you were talking about predicting mechs and everything, I was just like, you know, this son of a gun predicted which mechs I was going to use the last time I fought him. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, he definitely has been paying attention. Yeah, I got I got the pilots right too. <laughs> well, <laughs> they didn't have a whole lot of options. Well, I mean, they have plenty of pilots, like everybody. But yeah, but wait, wait, but I, I I wasn't sure what you would do. Well, actually, I I thought that um with uh with Yi that you might bring him down to a, a one two rather than going straight for the advantage but uh i needed to try to give these guys something of an edge no pun intended uh yeah. in order to offset some of the successes that you guys have been having you know it, or, or or in gm speak i needed to up the difficulty and make it more of a challenge yeah. to make the the win worth more all right uh, yeah, please pretty... review your pilots. Make sure everything is correct, especially the fact that there are advantages now. Yeah, I'm just playing with my uh, with my ammo as well. Yes, and I'm going. I am the home team, so I'm going to choose the south side. Once you are satisfied, go ahead and select the north, and click done. Change that to north. Have you set the map up? It is. Let me double check because I always second guess myself. But I I specifically was like. Don't you forget it, because I almost forgot it in I think Fohammer's match. Right. Like I was like seconds from clicking done, or maybe it was. All right, I am done. All right, and off we go. Of course, the obligatory show you the initiative phase, which doesn't mean much because it's all deployment. Mm, pretty open terrain here, I think. Yeah, this will be interesting. Um, uh, not a lot of places to hide. I mean, there's plenty of places to hide, but you know what I mean. Starting with this guy. Exactly what I'm going to do. Oh, son of a gun, I've been spotted already. It had to happen. <laughs> it was bound to happen, yes. Um... I bet this is... Nope, that's the Jenner. So are you going to bring your new heavy marauder? I almost said fat-ass marauder, but I don't know if that would have been... <laughs> uh... hmm, you're on level 2 up there, so... Level one's not going to give me any partial cover. See you uh when you mentioned when you're updating your roster and you pointed out that you were purchasing the 7F Jenner, I was thinking to myself, son of a gun, he's pulled a move from my own playbook. Because of course the 7F is the the Jenner that I prefer. Because it's a little bit chunkier than the other one. Alright, starting off, we have the big marauder moving first. And your Wolverine moving last, which puts me pretty much in the middle of all that. And again, I want to point out 5,900 to 8,400 battle value in James's favor before we begin. And here we go. All right. <laughs> What's that? I said, all right. 
Yeah. Let's get this done. Um, yeah. Let's take a look at this Marauder 4A. It's kind of a special Marauder. We had to do a little... I mean, there's nothing on it that is uh, not Tech 1. We had to do a little bit of... What's the word I want to use here? Lore finagling in order to allow it. Thing is, uh, let me see. oops, that's my starter. I mean, it's got nothing unusual systems wise. It's just law wise, yeah. they yeah. this particular design wasn't um, widely available until the end of the, the fourth succession war. Right. I guess it doesn't matter which way it goes. So let's. Uh... Yeah. No. The uh, yeah. There's nothing like design wise. There's no new tech or anything groundbreaking or anything like that. It's just a bigger, fatter marauder. <laughs> Hundred tons even. Look at all that armor. Forty one in the legs, thirty one in the side torsos, and forty five in the center. Thirty four on the arms. On the back side, you're gonna need multiple was, lasers to get through. What was your button again to check the thing between two hexes? Uh, middle mouse. Middle mouse. That's right. I think there's actually another button or key combination too, but I don't remember what it is. Let's see. Show keyboard shortcuts would probably show it, but I could have sworn it actually had. Let's see. Go to the keyboard. Let's see that. Line of sight tool. Control left click between two hexes. And then ruler tool, which is uh, alt left click, which is basically the same thing. Uh, as far as, uh, or rather, if you use just the middle mouse button, it'll do basically the same thing. Show you how many hexes and what may or may not be in the way. Bit of swamp running there. Did All you, right. Oh, you must have gone through a swamp act. I did, yes. Yeah. Always, always annoying when you find one of those and then you're like, shit, it's swamp. I'm screwed. All right, now I need to pull my pen out and start marking I've boxes. I've already lost the PPC. Are you kidding? From, from a from a holy shit! Through a, through, yeah, through armor critical on the right arm. Why didn't Why didn't we roll for edge? Uh, who's the pilot in that Marauder? Two edge. That's Clift. That is weird. Do we need to take a look? At, I'm gonna have to look at the pilot when the screen comes back up. It is possible I missed one of the check blocks as well. Well, that's uh, going to be huge to not, to not have a PPC from round one because of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we can always restart. We're only one round in. So if we need to restart the match, we will. Uh, let me go ahead and record this uh, these damages just in case something weird did happen. And let's see. Get back. We're each taking some hits. Jenner taking some hits. Uh, Firestarter taking some hits. I think a lot of hits are actually getting their target. Marauder taking some hits. And taking an internal slot. That's wild. Let's see what we got here. 
let's see. Heat is managed across the board, and assuming we don't have to restart, I'm losing out on initiative, but currently enjoying approximately 5% lead, 96 to 91. We may be restarting the match, though. I need to take a look at pilot information here. Do you want me to do that to see? Uh, it ha settings. oh nope, that's exactly what I did wrong. So if you view Clift or the Marauder pilot and you click the pilot yep. tab, you'll see the edge was put in. Uh, okay, it dude. should have uh the what you call it the things. Oh yeah, that doesn't doesn't have all the things. Yeah, it's only got yeah. Yeah, so that's what I missed. I put I put it in and I must have misclicked on the uh what you call that's, it. That's so gonna, yeah, not not gonna do head hits or anything. So yeah. So I'm just going to hit defeat real quick so we can get back to the load screen or whatever you want to call it. All right, so I'll just do uh, victory. Yeah. And we need to, um, and I, think, I think you need to do defeat again. Yeah. Before you're done. yeah I, think, I think you have to do defeat after victory. Yeah, that's, that and sounds about right. Yeah, just, just, I'm just going to click done just to yeah. get through the round. Done. done. I apologize for that. I, I see what I, I sometimes get ahead of myself or... You know, just simple mistake of missing a step. So that's all right. It happens. Yeah, I appreciate that, but I also have been trying very hard to not make those mistakes. <laughs> so let's configure your dude real fast. Uh, and yep, that's exactly what I did. I definitely did not click all the boxes. So let me go ahead and check the rest of your team out real quick. Ironically enough, it was only Clift. I don't know why I missed that. I actually, I think what I did was I clicked the SPA and forgot to click the five things for the edge. Yeah, no worries. So, all right, let me go ahead and re. Whoa, that's not what I want. Oh yeah, yeah. Come on. Our James. Yeah, I'll quickly tool up my change. Now, double check the map 21 by 21 generated all right and if you want to just double check one last time oh you had to play with your ammo a little bit too yeah oh if you mouse oh if you let the mouse hover over the dude it actually says that they have you know two edge and what the what the edge checks are for huh. oh nice yeah i didn't even notice that before good thing i'm checking for those supercharger and mask failures <laughs> well, you know, it was more of, of uh, completionism, if that makes That's any it. sense. <laughs> well, it was because I it, I figured if I hit all the ones that say mech, I'll be good. It doesn't matter what they are, as long as I hit them all. Wow, that definitely changed the terrain tremendously. Yeah, a bit less of a shooting gallery this time, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And this might actually, well, I mean, it was going to be interesting no matter what. But now it's definitely going to be like, oh, my, there's going to be a lot more maneuver here. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, what? Excuse me. When I was doing some practice matches at one point, I, I just left it as standard 21 by 21 and it generated a completely flat Martian map. Wow. That's yep. that's <laughs> almost impressive. <laughs> yep. All of the all of the random number generators came up with flat ass terrain. <laughs> yep. I mean everything's I'm I'm downhill, it looks like, because everything I'm in minus uh, it's all level. It's all level zero terrain on my side. Yeah, all level, level zero. Terrain. I've got mostly zero, but there's some. I got got one so got couple, wannabe got hill. Yeah. And yeah. I just mean if I I can't um sit, I I can't use partial cover if you're going to put someone on that on those level one hills. That's all. So. Well, the problem with those level one hills and even that level two is there's not a lot of woods in them. So. Yeah. I don't know if I want to <laughs> stay there. Might have to get a little bit more mobile this time. Yeah, that's all right. Um, Let me go ahead and cross, even though I'm sure this will change, go ahead and get rid of those uh, little check blocks I had for damage you suffered. <laughs> it just made me think, <coughs> excuse me, you're like, well, the trend was is I was win, some, win one, lose one, which means my next match will be a loss. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that because I have a note on, on my little cheat sheet that you're currently on a one win streak. So, yep. Uh, well, I got sensor returns. 
I'm going to wager that those are the Wolverine and the uh, Jenner. I may or may not be right. Found the Wolverine. Looks like I was uh, at least partially correct. Oh, you bunched them all up on me this time. Oh, much bigger uh, tip numbers here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lots of things getting in the way. Right. Well, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. This is true. Them. I've heard that somewhere. But the dynamics of this match have changed all because of the layout of the ground. I did like the fact that I took out that PPC in the first round, even though it wasn't supposed to have happened that way. All right, what are we looking at here? Wolverine taking two PPCs. You seem to be knives. You got them both. Yeah, that, that didn't happen to me last night. I'll say that much. Uh, and then basically every other shot on the board missed. It didn't matter who was firing it. Heat is obviously still well managed. I get the better end of this initiative, it looks like, and I'm enjoying a not quite 2% lead in, in battle value score. Yeah. Obviously, I wanted to shoot the Marauder, but I did not have line of sight to the Marauder, so the Marauder didn't get scratched this time. Too far, so I'm gonna go. All right. One would argue wherever the fire starter wants to go is the answer to that question. But you know, As you said a moment ago, it's every shot you need. What are we looking at here? 
Firestarter is fine. Awesome. Takes a couple of shots and hits the Marauder now. I almost misread that. Hunchback hits the Jenner, but not enough to do anything cool. Marauder firing at the Hunchback. Hunchback takes some hits. Firestarter misses. Jenner hits the Hunchback. And a couple of PSRs are made. Everybody's good. Everybody's good. All right. Keat is building up on the awesome, but that's what awesomes do. Everybody else is fine. That's why you three threw them. Yeah. Uh, looks like, again, I am taking the shit end of the initiative stick, but I still have a slight lead. Okay. I 1.01. <laughs> I'm rather proud of that point oh one, by the way. All right, let's see. I'm going to do that. I remember, do Wolverines jump? They do jump. They do. In Terry Sunday. Did not see that coming. Does that Marauder have a four six movement? It's got a, it's got jump jets. It's a hundred ton mech with jump jets. <laughs> Fuck me. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. I did not see you being able to jump or move that far, let alone jump. <laughs> Guess maybe I should look at the back a little bit more. Uh, let's see. All right, what do we got? What do we got? Hunchback taking some hits. Got a hit. Got an edge rerolled. <sighs> yeah, no. critical. That's that's. I think I was trying to say too much at once. Uh, Marauder taking a bunch of shots from the fire starter, gaining heat. Should be because the flamer stuck. Uh, Hunchback eats a couple of missiles and a laser. Hunchback misses with the AC, hits with two lasers and nothing else. Both PPCs hit the Marauder. And the Awesome takes fire from the Marauder. Yeah, it's all still paint fraud. Paint paint trade, sorry. Yeah, yeah, we're just uh chipping away at armor. It's uh Well, hopefully I can do something with a kick to the Marauder. <laughs> Hopefully I don't just kick off your leg with a hundred ton mech into a into a light mech. Well, as it turns out, that's exactly what happened. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> just if I had only known that the if I had only been paying attention to that Marauder having jump jets, I would not be in the situation I'm in right now. <laughs> uh let's see. Wolverine kicks away all the armor on the left leg of the hunchback. Uh so the hunchback is now at internal structure damage. Which the Hunchback does right back to the Wolverine. Uh, let's see. And then the fire starter kicks uh, the Marauder. And then Hunchback kicks the Wolverine. And they, as you said, literally trade some blows there. 
And the Firestarter moves, loses a leg. That's going to cripple that mech. And the pilot is going to take some damage as the mech falls over. Everybody else remains standing. And correct me if I'm wrong, you did hit the awesome, did you not? I did, yeah. At some PCs. point. Yeah, two okay. PCs, but so he had to make a PSR and succeeded. Yeah, yep. I, uh, for whatever reason, I didn't have it marked as I should have. Alright, I'm good. So let's see. We got some heat buildup. Well, I wouldn't even call that heat buildup. That's just things are getting warm. And wow, look at that horrible, horrible initiative roll. Can't get it. Can't catch a break here. Uh well. What do I do with this friggin' mech? Hmm. What do I do? Nope. That's what I'm... <laughs> uh, no, I uh, think that mech will be dropping out of the fight now. <laughs> I needed an 8 <laughs> to stand up. I'm just like, mm, no, not feeling confident with that 8. Looks like your Marauder pilot, Cliff, gets yet another kill. Got a Jenner angling for back shots. It's the one that's got enough lasers and just barely enough heat to be able to use all of them. Huh? That's right. I see some shepherding going on here. Actually, burn. Stop it. Uh, hmm. Damn, that Jenner is in a really good spot to not, or excuse me, in a really good spot to really mess up my awesome and not have a good spot for it to go, to not have its back exposed to it. I think that might be. Right. There we go. I don't really like that move. Let's see if my math holds out. I don't know if this is going to work. I feel like my awesome may have just got his ass totally left out in the wind here. Thank you, Mega Mech, for reminding me that I already had to surrender a mech. That's uh, really cute. All right, what do we got? Awesome, taking a laser, a single laser from the Jenner. Hunchback, taking a couple of shots and re-rolling one of them. That pilot no longer has edge. Awesome, taking some more hits as well. All three PPCs hit. Uh, Hunchback, scoring some internal structure on the left leg of that Wolverine. Taking him up to moderate damage. And critical slots lost on the hunchback. I had a feeling 
that your marauder was going to shoot at my hunchback. Everybody's still standing, though. Now it's for some melee phase. Both pilots missed. Yeah, I, it took me a second. I only saw one PSR and I was like, oh, you punched. Which obviously would have been your only option at that point. Now I think a little bit more about it. Oh, look, my hunchback moves last. Okay, I click done. But your auto moves first. Yeah, that's uh, not as good. Of course, it's heat is up, so fuck me. There's nothing I can do without awesome with its heat up as high as it is at the moment. Yep. Come on in, Jenner. Start nibbling. Where are you going, Mr. HBK? Great question. Great question. So that's, the, that's the AC-10 version, isn't it? Sorry. I don't know yeah, it is. Versions. Yeah. Because yeah. one, the one thing I don't like about the 4H is it has zero long-range capability. And that, to me, is strange. If I want to commit to that, now I don't have an option. You did a pretty good job of putting your uh, max out of the awesome's way. Not much I can really do with it. You can get your left arm wherever you want to be. Uh, the right arm, but yes. Right arm too. Yeah. You can turn that way here. Yeah, I, I only know that because I had to figure out which way to go. <laughs> Because their PPCs are arm, arm, torso, aren't they? Uh, one arm and two torso. Oh, yeah, okay. Which is, uh, as I'm sure you can imagine, slightly irritating. And, uh, wow, look at that! Ammo explosion! Uh, fuck. Alright. Awesome eats every laser from the Jenner. All of them in the backside. Uh, awesome eats more shit from the Wolverine. Marauder absolutely wrecks uh, the Hunchback. The pilot does appear to have ejected safely. Uh, that is a mech that is out, definitely. Uh, let's see, Hunchback defeated and destroyed. That was Clift too. <laughs> yep, I was just going to look to see who it was. Clift is just like, nope, fuck you. I am leading the league in kills. None of you will get this close to me. I did hit the PPC on the Jenner, so there's that. One, one armor on the, on the left torso, that's it. Yeah. And I did hit with the AC-10 and two medium lasers onto the Marauder before the Hunchback yeah, went the down. Too. Yeah, I noticed that. I didn't really uh, I didn't really go for the rear. I just wanted to minimize uh, how many weapons you could put on me, which, as it turns out, it doesn't matter. You only, got, you only needed one. <laughs> Damn it. You got a zero percent you got a zero percent punch you can do. I got nothing. Yeah. Well it's offering you a it's offering you a it's it's like it's my turn to do physical attacks, but I'm not got an active unit. Jenner. 
but it's like it's not uh, maybe just if i try doing okay for some reason it wasn't the selected unit oh are you good though okay there we go yeah, yeah say. there we go yeah uh, okay give me just one quick second james i gotta no worries all good thanks sure Actually, I'm going to mute myself because my pseudo daughter is coming up to bring stuff inside. She doesn't know I'm recording, so I'll be right back. I'll entertain the audience with the interesting fact that I learned this week. So, audience, here's a question for you. What was the first man-made object to break the sound barrier, to go faster than the speed of sound? I'll give you 10 seconds to think about it. Five seconds left. give up it was in fact the whip specifically the bullwhip uh the tip of a bullwhip moves at about back two okay so, sorry about know. that we're all good I here entertain the audience with interesting facts oh well please don't let me interrupt other than no, the no, fact no, I'm gonna... i finished I, I finished the fact so if you uh, want to hear it yourself you have to go back and watch the show <laughs> oh, you're gonna tell me to watch and find out huh <laughs> pretty bold move james the bold move <laughs> telling the host to watch and find out on his own content uh let's see surprisingly we still have a match <laughs> All right, uh, we're doing for initiative so okay the awesome is going before anyone else does yeah Welcome pretty much family. uh yeah things are not looking good All right. i i really need God, i need to try to at least get one kill here but god damn i'm not gonna i just need to return one of your pilots <laughs> could it be a mech I don't know. <laughs> you will. Hopefully, it's a mech. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus. Pretty sure I'm going to have a Jenner chewing on my ass no matter where I go. I don't have the movement range. Or will Cliff get a kill? <laughs> will Cliff get the trifecta? <laughs> Yep. As predicted, but also it's a Jenner. What else is he gonna do? <sighs> well, the spirits were in a decent position financially. We'll see after this match how things go. All right. So, utterly redonkulous. Let's see. Seven. Or seven. At least you can do full three piece PPCs this turn. Yeah, that's that's the only thing I got going for me. <laughs> Is I can use all three of them because I only used one last round. Awesome, continue to takes continues to take shots. I should say. Oh, look at that! I needed sevens and only one hit. And awesome pilots losing edge. Go ahead, kick me. I will. <laughs> Death of a thousand cuts. That's, that's I mean, that's that's really what's going to happen to that awesome. <laughs> Round seven. Oh, I see. There you go. You got, you got the nice balance of uh, initiative there. Yeah, yeah. Finally, when uh, well, it's not going to really do much good for me. <laughs> so what are you? Uh, three five. Yeah. So maybe I want to be that you can't. <laughs> really cause me problems. I mean, really, you've got the sharks in the water. Just, just circle and dive in. Yeah. Mattishaw fighting for his dear life at this point. All right. Where is that Marauder going to end up? I'll say this much. It won't matter. Here's why. Everything matters, Omar. Don't, don't, don't be like that. Well, I was just going to say something about I'm going to kill that Wolverine because of, between the two mechs, I feel like that's my better chance at scoring something. But presently, it's easier to hit the Marauder than it is the Wolverine. So, statistically speaking, 
I should still go for the Wolverine. It's got less armor. And the Wolverine's got ammo, which can explode. The, Mar the Marauder doesn't. I'll give you that. Yeah. Oh, that's right. PPCs, PPCs and lasers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Two, uh, two PPCs, two mediums, one large. Yeah, we're going to do three sevens. Oh, look at that. Awesome is losing critical slots. Uh, let's see. Awesome is now heavily damaged. Awesome is good. Wolverine also now heavily damaged and losing edge. Yep, took a hand hit. Uh, unfortunately, no ammo hit. And, yep. <laughs> I'm really fighting a withdrawing. Uh, uh, fighting withdrawal, that's what it is. No, no. Yeah, no, that's it. Tactical withdrawal is really what I'm doing. I should just be moving towards the edge of the map. Desperately trying to score at least one freaking point besides what I'm going to get because I was in the match. Go ahead, bring the general over here, James. Bring him over to me. Bring him to me. Maybe I can kill the Jenner. <laughs> uh. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to play that game, are we? We're going to play some game. We're, we're definitely playing a game. <laughs> uh, I think it's a foregone conclusion at this point who's winning here. There goes the left arm, the PBC less arm, I should point out, by the way. Uh, You're going to lose an arm on an, on an awesome. It's the arm to lose. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, both PPCs hit the Marauder right torso, one armor remaining. Uh, so we've got some damage transfer, but it's almost inconsequential. Both mechs are still standing. Here comes the Jenner. No kick? Oh, you wouldn't, you didn't Wait, quite well, no, I wasn't, I wasn't close enough. Yeah, I thought you were. My bad. Oh, look, I'll be moving first again. Yay. Round nine, by the way. So, one would say that... Something's gonna happen. It's gonna happen soon. Yeah, yeah. That's right, go ahead. Put your Jenner one level below and directly behind my awesome and punch my arm off with your stubby little... Or punch my <laughs> leg off with your stubby little arms. I'm not going to say why uh, I'm saying that right now, but because I don't know how many people have seen the particular video in question, but it is a video worth watching. As I struggle to leave this match with more than the obligatory one victory point. Man, the spirits are just taking a nosedive this year. <clears throat> and the awesome is now effectively crippled and down a PPC. That engine hit. Oh, what and, else? and it's and it's lost its gyro, and that's a dead mech right there, and it's second PPC. So that is it for that awesome. It looks like my efforts to score a point for the spirits. Well, it was prone. Oh no, you can't. Because right, I because I because I, I fired at my guns. That's why I had. To, oh I yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my arms are out of out of use. Yeah. All right. Well, congratulations, debutantes. You won, you dirty bastards. Uh. I gotta figure out now if I want to award that kill for the awesome for the the the. Well, no, technically the awesome was still in the fight. Technically, man, yeah, no, it's, it's not 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 a kill. I mean, it was uh, uh yeah, no, you're right. It could it uh it hadn't lost an arm, had it? So it, it, it still actually, had it one still, arm. Yeah. So it was still combat effective. It can still have fired one. Oh, yeah, it needs both. It needs both arms to be combat effective. But I'm happy to take that as not a, not an actual. Yeah, kill. yeah, I. I mean, to be totally honest, I probably would have ejected him <laughs> if it had gone one more round, but I didn't get a chance to. So, At any rate, it's a win. Uh, you're going to get, let's see, three victory points for winning, one victory point for the light mech, and two points for the 
Hunchback. Ah, excuse me. Utterly destroyed. Oh, yeah. You are correct. That Hunchback was utterly destroyed, which will give you three points instead of two for a total of seven to one as our final score. Ah. Uh, God damn. I really tried. I really, really tried. I mean, go ahead and make that 1d6 roll for that hunchback. Now, on a 6, it is somehow magically salvageable, and it is absolutely not. It's got the exact opposite of a 6. So that mech is absolutely gone. That's my first uh, my first utter destruction, though, I've, I've achieved. Is it? Yeah. Huh. All right. Next up, we need to look at fans. So let's pull up the rules. Fans are on page 12, but actually 13. I think I'm, I think I'm just plus one for winning, but not. Uh, I, I, I'm only on a two win streak right now. So, Well, for the fans, the streak numbers are slightly different. Okay. Uh, so you'll get plus one for winning, plus one for two win streak, and plus two Absolutely. for destroying an opponent, opponent's mech. So you've got a total of four here. Okay. Uh, yep. Plus four. So give me that 2d6 roll, please, sir. Okay. Plus four, four is, is eight. eight. And that is plus one fan. I was really expecting a little bit more, but you take what we get. Apparently, apparently I can roll for shooting, but I can't roll for anything else. <laughs> so. Evidently. Evidently. <laughs> but you do get an additional fan because you won as part of yeah. one of your sponsorships. So you'll have that. And so you actually gain two fans. For the Cyan Spirits, minus one for losing. Uh, they are now on a three loss streak, so that's going to be minus one additional. Their own mech was destroyed, so it cancels out one of those minus ones. So it's a grand total of minus one on this. So one, or excuse me, 2d6. Minus one is correct. Three. a three, which is minus one fan. They actually lost a fan. In this match. That's probably the fan I picked up, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, like, man, fuck these guys. Those debutantes know what they're doing. That's ridiculous. What a bunch of bullshit. All right. Next up is Wealth. This is going to be easy. Our final right, score was... Draft first, isn't it? Nope, Wealth is next. Oh, Wealth first, okay. Uh, seven to one, which is a total of eight, which means the debutantes will gain 18 Wealth. And the Spirits will gain eight Wealth. Let me go ahead, before we get to the draft, update appropriate sections of the beats here. Now, debutantes, now three wins, two losses, with a total cumulative victory points of seven on top of that. So that's going to be 37. Gaining two fans takes you up to 20, and your super secret squirrely roll modifier is now plus three. It's 1d6 here? Uh, you can roll it in Discord, and I'll take a look at it after I okay, get done I doing it. I rolled a four. I rolled a four in uh in um Mega Mech. Um, verified, and so that's a total of seven. Seven. Right. Uh, no, I wanted to. Fit, I was doing so. Oh, finances. I needed to add that in here. All right. So match earnings is eighteen. Wealth fan income is fifteen. And then we'll get to the other stuff momentarily. Now we go to the spirits who are in dire straits at the moment. One win, four losses, cumulative victory points, 14. Uh, they will lose a fan, taking them down to 10. Finances are going to look a little bit rough. Let's see, eight wealth. Fans is 10. Currently sitting at 44 wealth before I do all the other stuff. So next we have the draft. The draft is on page 14. It's I actually seven plus one for winning eight. Give me just a second. Let me get to the right page of my notes. Here we go. All right. Plus one for winning. You are not on a three win streak, so it's just a plus one. You rolled a seven for a total of eight. That means. No one is drafted from your team, you lucky son of a gun. You get to keep your you get to keep your mass murderer Clift with you. 
right, 2d6. Uh, the spirits have a three loss streak right now. So that's going to be minus one for losing, minus two plus, or excuse me, minus two additional for a three plus losing streak for a total of minus three. Uh, they're not going to get drafted. <laughs> I just, I realized that the film or the video won't show the roll results, but I just rolled snake eyes. <laughs> so, yeah, it, yeah, you should take one of the good pilots from from one of the other teams that did get drafted and give it to the, the spirits, right? <laughs> just they rolled minus one in the draft roll. They somehow better. Oh, uh, which one was it that got recent? That was most recently drafted. That really kind of hit me hard. Uh, uh, Omar. Uh, Omar. Yeah, Salama Omar um, from uh, the yeah. Industrialist. Yeah. yeah, Omar is now here. Oh man, damn it, James! That opened a sore wound. I shouldn't have mentioned that. That that's you know you're not supposed to open old scars, right? <laughs> God, that really stung when I rolled that one. Okay, right. so we've got nobody getting drafted. Our next step is expenses. So we'll start with the debutants who were supposed to lose tonight but didn't. You have one, two, three, four, five, six mechs with one, two, three, four, five, six uh, people working on them. So your maintenance is going to be minus three. The spirits, I think, are in pretty much the same situation. Uh, oh, one, two, three, four, five. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. I do need to take that off of there. Which, where is he? Right there. That guy. All right, one, two, three, four, five. It was still six, so yeah, it's man, minus three for maintenance, and then excuse me, salaries. Starting with the other guys, two for all the greens and regulars. Three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine. Your salaries have uh, changed slightly, I believe. I think I'm nine as well. Yeah. And then the spirits. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I didn't actually update them. These guys got moved up. So I'm going to double check that number. Uh, let's see. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Their salaries alone is more than they earned in the match. All right, repair costs. All okay, right, this, this is where some math numbers come in. Starting with the debutantes, the Marauder 4, let's see, only lightly damaged, so that's going to be a 1. Wolverine, heavy damage, medium, is 4. And the Jenner, only light damage, going to be a 1. That's minus 6 for repairs, but you have a plus 5 for your five. sponsor. So that will obviously balance out. And none of your pilots were injured, so zero medical. And now for the spirits, who suddenly have only two mechs to fix. Well, there was one, actually, that I didn't write on my notes. This Vindicator, it's lightly damaged. Why do we even have a fucking Vindicator? I don't even like them. I would have gotten rid of that the first chance I Oh, because it wasn't being maintained. Yeah, it means I... Oh, no, it's being maintained now, so I don't need to... Okay, never mind. Never mind. Oh, uh, where am I at? Repair costs. Awesome. Crippled. That's an, atl or an assault mech crippled. That's 10 wealth by itself. God damn. And then the Firestarter light mech that is crippled, that is 4. That is a total of minus 14 in repairs. Minus 1 medical. Oof, that's rough. Let me go ahead and punch those numbers into the... Uh, I almost said tabulator because I felt like that's something they would say in, in Warhammer. The uh, note see. Pewter. What? The note pewter in Battletech, wouldn't it be? Probably, actually. Yeah. Zero, and then repair sponsor is five. And then the spirits. Repair minus, goddamn, 14. Minus one. Oops. The other dude. <clears throat> we got repair costs. We figured out medical costs. Next up is the repair rolls. All right, James, to repair your Marauder 4A, I need a two plus, and you have four attempts. Okay. 
Uh, whoop, first one failed. Then there's the second one. Yeah. For the Wolverine, four plus with three attempts. Okay. And there you go. And lastly, the Jenner needs a three plus three attempts. One. There it is. All right, my turn. Uh, let's see. For the awesome to be repaired, I need a four, uh, four attempts. One, two, got it. Awesome lives to fight another day. Not so much the hunchback. Firestarter also needs a four plus with three attempts. One, two, three. So all mechs of import are repaired. Now we do some experience points. Let's see. Clift is going to receive a big number. Because apparently only Clift gets to kill Max. Alright, let's see. Clift, my friend, you get three, or excuse me, four points, taking you up to seven. Tariq gains two, taking them up to also seven. And Bui gets two, taking her up to three. Then for your text, Lagumba receives two, up to ten now. Wega, I think I'm saying that right, receives two, also at ten now. And Yilmans receives two, up to twelve. Then we have the Spirits. Unfortunately, they only gain one point each across the board. Matashov. Four, Yi gets one to two, Ivory gets one also to two. Then the Tex. Uh, what are we looking at here? Onyancha, or however the heck I say it, is now at eight. Aurora, five. And Absco, also at five. Boom. I think our paperwork is done. That will take us back. Check real quick. Right. So I can see what I'm doing. That back there. Switch this over. And yeah, and we're back in the studio. And Olaf, I almost said Omar. Olaf is, uh, well, he's been entertained. Um, and of course, he's a supporter of the new management, as it were. So. Isaac, wonderful, wonderful show, wonderful job. Congratulations on another win. And as you mentioned earlier this evening, uh, it was time for a loss based on trends, and it looks like you just crushed said trend. Well, I want to say, like, I don't want to apologize first off to the fans for the early technical difficulties. Um, I, <laughs> I understand that could have probably – look, this is why teams have timeouts in some sport, is it can really throw off the opposition's momentum. Maybe maybe the uh, the spirits had some momentum, but that that early reset by the uh, by the judges may have lost them some of that. Um, but overall, I think that uh, it was a game of positioning, and uh, we happened to come out on top. So good on Indeed. the silent spirits for the effort they made, and uh, it's a shame to see that uh, that hunchback uh, go into the scrapyard. But uh, that's that's uh, that's hilarious for you. It is hilarious, and the cool thing about Solaris is getting that same exact variant of the hunchback. Even though it's not the standard 4G, won't be hard. I think we'll see that 4H again in the Spirit Stable. And of course, I want to make sure the fans see that uh, what they, you know, we, we saw what the Marauder 2, the Mad 5A, uh, can achieve. So if you are a, a buyer for military or house forces, <laughs> please do reach out to Blackwell Industries, care of New Valencia, to place your orders now. Opening soon an outreach as well. And for every pre order, of Marauder 2, you'll get a 20% discount on Chilton Mark III heat sinks purchased from uh, from Blackwell as well. So special offer. Uh, mention, mention this show to get that deal. Use the code right here on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I couldn't help it. I had to do it. Uh, yeah, fans, stick around. We've got two more matches coming up the rest of this evening. Uh, we've got uh, the Crows taking on the opposition, and we've got the Honeybees and whatever team is left over that I can't think of off the top of my head right now. <laughs> the Wolverines? They yeah, the that's Wolverines right. Yeah. yeah, we haven't seen the Wolverines yet. You would think I would remember that team. Uh, so, yeah, 
stick around, my friends. More to come. And then, of course, the lights come back up, and Olaf's probably sitting there going, like, wow, that's right. Because, uh, you know, he's had a couple of drinks by now. Uh, all right, all right. You know, first off, we had the Countess in earlier. <laughs> and then, you know. Uh, James, that was, uh, well, that didn't go as well as I would have liked. But it didn't go as poorly as it could have, I guess. I guess there's yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, um, like, I, I really had to, sort of just like, so the Wolverine, I, I at, at one point, decided to try and use the sacrificial lamb to draw fire. And, and, and draw fire, he did. Um, but, uh, yeah, the initiative was what killed you there. Yeah. Then he, it was. Yeah, a, a couple of times. The and then getting yeah that that a few few criticals on the awesome then doing you know engines and gyros. Yeah, that that, 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 was, that was that was the death knell there. I think uh, the funny part about the initiative is I had two pilots to your one with tactics, and I still couldn't get really good ground as far as initiative was concerned. I think the other thing too was uh. You know, the Awesome doesn't have a great movement profile, 3-5. The Hunchback has a 4-6, which you would think they would work well together, and I think they did initially. Uh, I think just losing the fire starter, which was meant as a distraction similar to your your um, Wolverine, you know, once we lost the fire starter, I kind of lost the ability to keep your team kind of scattered, as it were. When your Wolverine came up as the distraction that you said it was, I definitely was like, yep, if I kill that now... Uh, that's a couple of points. Maybe I'll have a fighting chance. And then, of course, I from that point on, I spent the rest of the match trying to chase points. Personally, I find I, I find the awesome quite intimidating mech. The awesome and, and the Warhammer, like those those two PPC combos. When you're talking about thirty twenty five level tech, yeah. Um, especially when you get a really good pilot in there, when they're going to be hitting those PPCs most of the time, twenty damage every round is not something to sniff at. Thirty no. damage, you know, every second round with the with the awesome or. 30, 30 spike damage when you need it is pretty substantial. So, yeah, um, yeah I, I was definitely when I when I realized that it was a good chance that the spirits would have to bring that awesome because of the next they lost, I had to rethink my my lineup. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember what the decision making process was, but I think, um, I mean, I'm gonna take a look real fast. I don't remember what their other mechs were. I remember thinking to myself that this is probably the best option I had at the time. Yeah, because there was the, there was the Thunderbolt, but I had the Hunchback and a busted up Vindicator, which Vindicators are already kind of useless. Yeah. And so, and then it's like, well, I've got a Fire Starter, which are half decent, but then I also have a Locust, which is, again, super crunchy, super yeah. super squishy, I should say. So I think the thought process was taking those out, and of course. I don't know if you recognize this, and I hope the players do, uh, but definitely for the viewer's case, um, I try to select my mechs for each team prior to knowing what you guys are bringing to the table. Yeah. I do put a little bit of thought in as far as what kind of challenge I want to give you guys based on you know skill level, because you know playing you versus playing Talus, for instance, the skill levels are significantly different, although don't let Talus, like, don't don't forget that he knows how to put a game together in his head. Like he's got half a brain in there, and he'll still put a hurting on you if you let him. Yeah. Um, so, you know. Um, but yeah, looking at the mechs that the spirits had, the assault medium light combo was probably a better option than trying to run a heavy yeah. something. So that was they, they either had to um, <laughs> it, 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 that that option they could do straight away, or they needed two heavies. They could do two heavies with the fire starter. Um, or they could buy a heavy and an extra medium and do the new heavy, new medium, and the hunchback. Yeah. Um, so I was trying to I was trying to plan around those three different things, like what what heavy, medium, medium combination could you do, or what what um, heavy, uh, heavy, heavy light could you do? And doing heavy, heavy something, you know, heavy, heavy light or heavy, medium, medium would have required purchasing another mech, which two mechs, yeah, two mechs to do either. Yeah. Of those. Yeah. So. Uh, available option, but not one I really wanted to explore with having they've got plenty of money. It's just they don't have a lot of flush funds, we'll say. Yep. You know, they're not in the case, they're not sitting in the situation like the Dragonborn or the Industrialist where they have roughly 100 wealth. They've got, in, they're in the 40s, I think, 30s, something like that. Well, the good news is now that that, that tech is now sitting, sitting on his hands because of the death of the Hunchback can now repair that Vindicator. Well, there, yeah. ironically, when I go, when I went to look to see if I needed to roll for further degradation, and um, I don't need to because there's a there's a tech assign finally. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how that happened, but as it turns out, I want to repair it just to get rid of it because 
fucking vindicators. Listen, if you're a vindicator fan out there, by the way, good on you. I'm not a fan. Just that's just all I'm gonna say. Uh, James, thanks for the good match. Thanks for the show. I think uh, this is a, this will be a good one, and uh, looking forward to seeing what what more we can get going for you out there. Yeah, looking forward to see what I can do with the Nationals with their five five pilots next week. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, but... <laughs> you know, a five five pilot in a stalker is still a pilot in a stalker. It is a pilot in a stalker. It's uh, not gonna hit shit, and it's gonna take a while to knock it down, but. It can still hit every now and again. <laughs> yeah. All right, my friends, stick around. We got one more match uh, tomorrow, and then another match in just under a week, and then we'll have, of course, the weekly recap, and we will then be moving into the commanders round, where hopefully by the time I start the commanders round week, I'll actually know what the hell I'm going to do with it. Stick around, my friends. We got more content coming on the way in the next few days. In the meantime, happy Halloween. yeah, happy Halloween. And in the meantime, stay safe out there. Uh, not because it's getting dark earlier, but just because it's dark. This world is a crazy place. Stay safe.